come to make things right You and I must fight for our rights You and I must fight to survive Hi, I'm Shamara Leek with your rap, hip hop, and R&B news. The Roots are in the studio putting the finishing touches on their 10th album, a mostly dark, synth-heavy meditation on the state of the world called Rising Down, tentatively slated for an April 29th release on Def Jam, the last album on the group's contract with the label. Birthday Girl will be the band's first single. The Gym Class Heroes are in the studios recording the CD that will follow up their 2006 As Cruel as School Children album. 28-year-old hip-hop star Neo was arrested last week in Atlanta for speeding over 100 miles per hour. He was charged for reckless driving and driving without a license and was released later that day on a $1,300 bond. His court date is set for March 25th. Neo's sophomore album, Because of You, won the Grammy for Best Contemporary R&B Album, but he has been engaged in a lawsuit against the tour promoter behind R. Kelly's Double Up Tour, from which he was booted after only two shows. According to Neo, he was booted because he was selling more tickets than Kelly. Common has his 2008 all planned out. The rapper announced he will release his Invincible Summer EP in June, followed by the full length The Believer later in the year. Common will also participate in an ad campaign along with Billy Joe Armstrong, Karen O, and others to celebrate 100 years of Converse shoes. JLo and Mark Anthony are the proud parents of twins. Last Friday, JLo had a girl that weighed 5 pounds and 7 ounces and a boy that weighed 6 pounds. They were born in Long Island, New York. Finally, Justin Timberlake will induct Madonna into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the organization's March 10th ceremony. That's the buzz and rap hip hop and R&B news. I'm Shamara Leek, and now we'll go over to Vicky Vera with your dose of rock. What's up? I'm Vicky Vera with the rock scene. Uh oh, looks like Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance is in trouble. A maverick book publisher named Hart Fisher laughed out at Gerard, who was his former apprentice, claiming the lead singer has been falsely endorsing his new comic with another publisher as his own. He also claimed that Gerard has been stealing Fisher's words and ideologies for my chemical romance music. The battle is on. Linkin Park and tour mates Kohi and Cambria took a break from their tour last week to help rebuild homes in the area still affected by Hurricane Katrina. The project is a collaboration between charity organizations, Music for Relief, and Habitat for Humanity. Maximum Magazine has apologized for publishing a negative review of the Black Crows. 
new album by a writer who hasn't listened to the whole CD. The Black Crow's War Paint got a rating of two and a half stars. Ouch. The band released a statement saying advanced copies were not available. Therefore, Maxim could not hear the entire album. Whoop! Just seven months after the release of Memory Almost Full, Sir Paul McCartney is already brewing up a new album. According to his publicist, Paul started recording last week, but he has been writing for a while. It should be ready by the summer. Paramore is not breaking up. After a blog post left by Haley Williams saying the band was going through eternal conflict, rumors circulated the internet saying Paramore was at its end. Williams stated, we posted because we are going through a hard time. I felt the, that because we have a really good support system in you guys, our fans, it would be better for us just to be honest about what's going on. Bruce Springsteen, Neil Young, and Pearl Jam have contributed tunes to an anti-war soundtrack for a documentary about a U.S. soldier paralyzed in Iraq. Body of War focuses on Thomas Young, an army soldier paralyzed upon arriving in Iraq. It will spread nationally in subsequent months following its March 13th debut in Austin, Texas. I'm Vicky Rare and that's the last bass riff to the rock scene. Now on over to Entertainment News. Hi, I'm Patty Wittenberg with your Entertainment News. There was a lot of drama at the Oscars last week. An outrage was fueled by the in-memoriam video package which excluded the recently deceased Roy Schreider, Alan Melvin, and Brad Renfro. Another low point for the Oscars is the three-hour telecast awards show received the lowest ratings ever. On a positive note, Irish musicians Glenn Hansard and Marketa Ergolov won the best original song, Falling Slowly, from the independent film, Once. No Country for Old Men won Best Motion Picture, Direction, and Screenplay. As a result, Miramax has stated that the film will be playing at more theaters on behalf of its winnings at the Oscars. Currently, the film runs in 1,101 theaters. Now it will be running in 2,030 theaters. The Bourne Ultimatum won two sound categories in the editing trophy. LaVey and Rose won Best Actress in Makeup. And There Will Be Blood won Best Actor in Cinematography. The Writers Guild of America have made progress towards a contract will, which will have five key gains. Establishing Writers Guilds of America jurisdiction over writing for new media. Giving writers separated rights in new media content, which are enjoyed by writers of original television and motion picture scripts. Establishing residual payments for new media reuse of covered material, including internet downloads and ad-supported streaming of feature film and TV programs. Establishing distributors gross as the basis of calculating new media residual payments and creating meaningful access to information and auditing tools that will allow the Writers Guild of America to monitor the development of new media markets. That's it for your entertainment news. I'm Patty Wittenberg and we'll be going over to Munich Guys.
Joan Pony, um, interviewing End of an Era. Um, this unique band is really definitely worth the time to check out. They're really amazing. So um, we're going to go catch up with them and see what's up. What's up? So I was actually a fan back in the old days, too. The old days? The old days. Oh, wow. We have, oh, yeah. we, we have old days? Holy. You know, one time you guys rented a tour bus to New York. Yes, yeah. yeah. You were on that bus? Yeah, I was on that bus. Holy. <laughs> It was more of a school bus. School bus. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. That's cool. From that, we'll so check the list. Yeah. 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 Wow. So looking back, like, how can you say in an era grew a change? Cool. Can I answer this one? Yeah, absolutely. I joined a band. <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> you stop eating peanuts. <laughs> it's so unprofessional. Um, I think that uh, we've progressed as songwriters. No, no I'm, I'm just kidding. Um. Oh no, you answer this one. Okay. Um, how have we grown? That's a good question. I don't think we've so much grown as we've just kind of stuck to what we were doing and what worked for us in the beginning. And uh, over time, it just seems like more and more people kind of latched onto what we were already doing. So I, I think, I don't know, unless anybody else can answer it better. You got it. Cool. No, he's got it. I just wanted to hold the microphone. Okay. Well, a lot of it has to do, especially off the new CD, with um, basically our view of society and the world, which is basically you're all a bunch of morons and uh, you're all going to die soon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, like we, we really just tried to get a message across to think for yourself and not, you know, go with what is being sold to you and told to you and pretty much, you know, just think for yourself uh, no matter what the social norms are and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's really like what we're trying to say with the new CD and stuff like that. With the old CD, it was a little little more um, on the uh, personal end. Uh, but now we're, uh, we're branching out a little more now, I'd say. So as far as stage performance, like whose idea was it to get all like dressed up and everything? Or like the, like the explosive image and everything? No, that was, uh, that was something we decided on in the very very beginning of the band actually before we even played a single show we uh, noticed there were a lot of bands that come up and um, just kind of play their songs and yeah that's fine but we wanted to put on a show we wanted to have it be more of an experience than just you know a bunch of guys playing instruments which gets kind of boring you know after it's a after a while it's you know a band's a band everyone's seen it before but we're trying to you know do something a little different or a little bit more exciting to watch funny story about that is last may we played bamboozle and there's all these bands and they're all um real bands big signed act and stuff and then everyone like sees us in the back throwing flour on ourselves and we're just throwing flour just to give us that nasty dirty look everyone's like who the heck is who the heck are these guys and you know, what what people really remembered when we got off stage was oh those were the crazy guys that put on that awesome show so it was cool it helped it was something we yeah some we smashed instruments stage. yeah we destroyed the whole stage and and it's that is on top of the fact that maybe people enjoyed us that's what helped them remember us so it's cool that's another question i was gonna ask you like how was bamboozle experience want to talk about that awesome <laughs> all right talk another bamboozle was amazing um None of us have ever got a chance, well I think none of us have ever got a chance to play in front of 50,000 plus. So it was definitely a great experience, especially walking on that the stage for the first time. And then, uh, you know, gotten to meet all the other bands that play there, people that we listen to today, meeting all the artists. Was, and everybody was really cool, they took really good care of us, and it was just a great experience all around. So Another funny story. Is, um, <laughs> we, uh, we did our sound check that morning at Bamboozle. And while we were walking off the stage, there was probably about 30 people in the audience. So we were figuring, like, we, we walked off the stage, you know, got ready and everything. We figured, um, yeah, we're the first band well, the, for the day. maybe there'll be like 200 people or something like that. We walk back on stage, and the place is like mobbed. It's like, yeah. Close and to 50,000 people. Yeah. yeah. I, I think my penis shriveled for a second, but <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to say anything else, anyone? Just on another note on Bamboozle is that um, we're releasing this information tonight, so it's okay. We're actually getting back on the break contest for the finals this year as, like, reigning champions, quote-unquote. But that doesn't really mean anything. It's just another shot for us to get to Bamboozle again. So um, so we're trying to rally troops so April that we can 19th. do that again. April 19th, right here at the Stone Pony. So.
conflict between your image, you're saying, like, I remember saying, like, it, people would think that they would hear one sound, but they would get something else, like, but you felt that you'd have to change them. Uh -huh. There you go, yeah. <laughs> now, well, first off, when we got the um, the Asbury Park uh, thing, it said there was one quote in there that I loved, which was, um, I thought these guys were an emo band. But, um, yeah, a, a lot of people don't know what to expect, usually, when we come on stage. You know, they think it could be... Uh, an industrial band or a goth band or a heavy metal band or a death metal and i think that really we just put out really a sound that's all our our own and our image is really no it's not really one thing just like our music so sorry <laughs> so um yeah i i don't think there's really so much of a conflict as there is um cluster. a cluster cluster fuck of, of different <laughs> things going on <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> it's not wonderful. We actually we <laughs> we we get along actually really well uh, compared to some of the other bands that I've been in in the past. But it's like anything else. You spend so much time with the same people. Like I would like to kill you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but you know, no, we we actually we do get along pretty well. Oh, let me, can I use it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being in a band, I love this because uh, this is really... Being in a band is like having a girlfriend, okay? Like, I right now have four girlfriends sitting right next to me on my left, and they all get on my nerves, but at the same time, I love them to death. And at the same time, we sexually pleasured each other. <laughs> so, that's how I look at it. I'd like to kill you, too. <laughs> so, what are some of your influences behind everyone's personal influences? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess where I started, I started more in like the alternative, uh, like the alternative heavy rock genres, and then I kind of crossed over into the, like the industrial stuff a little more. So um, that's that's basically where I'm rooted, like more eclectic style. I grew up listening to like the Misfits and the Dead Kennedys, Amen, some of the more punkier kind of stuff. That's pretty much where I get most of my bases from. I like Ashley Simpson, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Um, <laughs> no, I, I grew I grew up um, a lot of electronic influences like Nine Chanel's and Skinny Puppy. Um, but I also really enjoy like you know like older like Pink Floyd and Genesis and stuff like that. Stuff that's really out there and most other people wouldn't listen to. That's probably what I'd do. Uh, I listen to a lot of different things. It was mostly metal, like. Um, Slipknot, I guess you can say Black Sabbath, Nazi, stuff like that, Nonpoint. That's mainly where I get my influences from playing. I get my influences, and it's funny because I actually came up with an answer for this. Um, <laughs> I like a lot of oldies, to be honest with you, because my father used to listen to a lot of oldies, and he was uh, definitely a big inspiration as far as uh, getting me to play the guitar and everything like that. God rest his soul. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not a joke. joke. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people he's dead, but he's not really dead. <laughs> Some people feel sorry for me. Um, but yeah, like I, I kind of like I like music with a, I like music with a hook, you know, like catchy, catchy tunes. I like, but on a more a heavier sound. I can't really say what genre of music I like because I, I kind of like lying level with that. Like I just like all different types of music, so I really don't have a particular genre that I like. What have you seen change in the scene when you started out to now? Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, this is a lot. Can I say more? Well, one thing that has changed big time, this is just a like a physical thing, is that before we seem to come into this scene, nobody in the world had a keyboard. And all of a sudden, you see keyboards everywhere. That's all I'm going to say. But there's a lot more things. I'll let them get into that. Just... One thing that happened, I don't know how it happened, but thank, thank God it did, was that when we started out, it just seemed like the whole scene was overrun with metalcore and emo. And that's all there was, and that was it. But now it seems like bands are trying to, trying keyword, you know, branch off into different things and stuff like that. I find some of the bands today a little more interesting than I did like when we first started out, which was just... We were like, why are we playing this? Because, you know, it was just weird. Uh, I actually have nothing to say. <laughs>
Uh, the pants got tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Uh, I made friends, yes. Yeah, uh, yes, right. yeah. With, uh, Divinity Destroyed tonight. Uh, Divinity Destroyed were very cool. Then we've actually known them from uh, our older bands back in the day. They've been around for a very long time. Um, we are very, very close with another band, Suicide City, who Brogan mentioned earlier. Um, <laughs> let's see, who else likes us? <laughs> Not very many. <laughs> Crypt, yeah, Cryptovirus, Red 13, Black Tooth Grin. Yeah, that's that's true. There's actually there's a lot of great bands. There's, a lot of young kids coming. No, there's a lot of great young bands in New Jersey right now, and uh, I think it could be on the cusp of another generation of great Jersey music. Hopefully, if all these people could stay together, including us. But I'm with you. You just said you want to kill me. <laughs> Ooh, every day. <laughs> yeah, every day of our lives. We uh, we don't have good luck no. at all. Yeah, recently uh, we were in Buffalo, New York, and we played this great show. It was absolutely fantastic. First time we were up there. Kids loved us, sold a lot of merch. And then um, we're going out to our van, and we noticed that the door is left open. At first we were like, oh, who left the door open? Then we realized the window was smashed in, and uh, a lot of our stuff had gotten stolen. Yeah, we got and no, a lot of my stuff. Okay, no, no one else's stuff except for Brogan's window got touched. But I like um, our GPS system, which is we call it Sally, and that, that's crucial when you're on the road. And then uh, our keyboard, one of our keyboards, all my clothes, and uh, my phone charger. Yeah, but you, yeah, but but one thing that came from that is people rallied for us. We had a lot of people donate some money and donate things and uh, labor so we got the window fixed I got my GPS back like people really helped us out so as much as there's hardship you know people who have supported us really do support us so what's coming up friend of an era? Madison Square Garden <laughs> uh, well we are going to uh, be doing like uh, like you said the break contest again uh, to try to get to bamboozle and April that's 19th. April 19th and that's gonna be really important for us and um, we're also playing the hoodwink festival which we don't know May the date. It's May 2nd, but we've heard otherwise, so it's May 2nd. <laughs> we uh, just recently put out an EP released in January called The War Against, produced by Billy Gracia Day from Biohazard slash Suicide City. You can tell I had that recited. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we're planning on trying to get on the road a lot and try to get as much promotion for the new CD as possible. Try to get the, the CD out there. We want to get a lot of new faces. There's only so much we could do in Jersey. Um, so we want to definitely want to branch out. Right now we're doing a lot of tours on the East Coast side. We just, uh, you know, but that's yeah, a, past, past we have, yeah, we have now Virginia, no, Virginia, no, no, West. West, yeah. We, we don't branch out West, just on the East Coast side. So that's what we like to do. That's very nice. Is there anything else you want to share with people watching this? Do you have two hours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, check out our MySpace at myspace.com backslash end of an era zero one. And uh, love us, please, please love us, please. And just remember, April 19th, the break contest finals right here at the Stone Pony. We want to play Bamboozle again this year. And for the fourth time tonight, April 19th, the break contest, uh, we want to play Bamboozle this year. <laughs> and do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. good ending. Is there else that's it. Oh, that's cool. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was awesome. So thank I didn't you. actually think thank I would you. nail you smack the bed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Appreciate it. Get up a little bit. Are you ready? One, two, three, go!
Hey, what's up? I'm Eric and I'm here with your concert schedules. On March 3rd, Emory and the May Day Parade arise at the Blender Theater at Gramercy in New York City. March 4th, the Black Crows will shake up the floor in Fillmore, New York at Irving Plaza. On March 6th, the, Car the Cobra Starship and the Cab will be playing at the Fillmore at the Theater of Living Arts in Philly. The Starland Ballroom welcomes All That Remains and Chimera on March 7th. The Brick Mac opens again after four years on March 8th, presenting Set to Sound, Endless Escape, and All You Can Eat Buffet. March 10th brings The Cure to Barcelona, New Jersey at the Paula St. Jordi. The Taste of Chaos Tour hits the Starland Ballroom with Avenged Sevenfold, Atreyu, Bulls for My Valentine, and more. Well, thanks for watching and add us on MySpace and YouTube at Backstage Story.